Up to until a couple of hundred years ago, all of our settlements, cities and towns and villages were based on, you know, where can we get enough clean water? And we're coming back to a point where that resource pressure becomes very real for us day to day. We're going to be increasing population levels, but this is going to go on to increase it by two billion more people in the next 30 years. If we continue at today's pace of freshwater usage, the gap between the supply of fresh water and the demand of fresh water is projected to be as much as 40 percent. There's wars. Darfur was largely a war about water and water rights. Another example which is huge is that of the Aral Sea. The cotton industry in Central Asia was significantly supported with fresh water. Fresh water was diverted from the rivers that feed into the Aral Sea into the agricultural lands which grew cotton. Net result, the Aral Sea has pretty much dried up and the place is an ecological disaster. Let's flip back 1997. The Yellow River, one of the major rivers of China, went dry for nine months of the year. Finding mechanisms in which this opportunity or the scarcity value of water becomes reflected in the decisions people make, this for me is the fundamental challenge. Sure. I mean, I think the papers have progressed well. I guess my... I've got two comments. One on the technology. I think one of the big opportunities we have, of course, the cost bills that were developed as, as part of the Water Resources Group project that we've debated quite a lot in the GAC. We're beginning to discuss this nexus right now. Yes, we need to talk about that in our country, in our, in our city. The floor is open for any other kind of thoughts or perspectives on... And this kind of food, water, energy nexus. The issue is who's got the time, the energy, the effort, and the money to do it. I think we're falling into the question of prioritization. I'm talking about the energy. 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 The Global Agenda Councils are really a brain trust of the world's smartest thinkers and experts from around the world, from different regions, different stakeholder groups. It's different than any other event because it goes beyond just meetings and, and preset panels. It really is about group conversations around issues and solutions. Right now we have 600 people represented and they'll convene in 72 different councils and have conversations over three days, essentially. So the issues range from food security to climate change, systemic financial risk, population growth. The councils, if they talk about thematic issues, they talk about natural resource scarcity, and, and here you have water as one of the key elements in that. Water security is understanding how the water resources in a particular catchment, in a particular area, underpin the economic, the social and the environmental well-being of that area. Go further into our first session. And the allocation of blue water to farmers. Who are the players? What are the major solutions? Uh, and how do we how do we start to activate? The issues of uh, geopolitics, the issues of political stability, the social harmony, all comes from water. I'm here because I believe passionately in finding solutions to the issues in the water sector. We have to remind people that the environment matters and in this arena we would suggest it underpins the economy that everybody's trying to wrestle with here. What you have through that is an opportunity to have that conversation with those exactly. students that you would not otherwise have. You couldn't have, have had it. Fair, fair point. One of the ways we talk about this is in the form of just a very simple device, a triangle. You put water up here and you put energy here, you put agriculture over here. Where is the stressor? Is, is it that more water is needed to grow food over here and if this one gets pulled a little bit more, what happens to the water available for 
energy. What happens to the water available for cities, for drinking water? Of course, the, the Food Security Council want to talk about it from the perspective of how do we get people enough calories to live, particularly poor people. The Energy Council want to talk about it from the perspective of how can we ensure that there's enough energy in each market for people to improve their quality of life. Is, is that interplay between one council and the other on problems which are across the boundaries of the council that is fascinating and very important? Yeah. So should we all stop drinking coffee or should no. we? No, of course not. And, and his point about what kind of water are you, not this blue, gray, pink stuff, but how expensive is the water? So we're sort of trying to be sure we get the essence of these conversations and we sort of either type them up or sort of synthesize them in a way that we trickle down to hear our key issues that are emerging. We have close to 20, 20 actors that sit on our project board now. This includes large food and beverage, mining metals, financial services companies, internet information technology companies. They can take action on water at their own level, be it you know, mess, passing the message through their supply chains or thinking about what water security or water risk means to their business. So they do take it on, we do some projects there, and that's how we take these ideas to action. Externalities are cost to society, which are part of normal everyday business, which business does not pay for. So in that sense, we are internalizing profits and externalizing costs. Profits are taken in, costs are pushed out. This can't go on forever. $2.2 trillion was the total externalities of the top 3,000 corporations in the world. That's not a viable solution for success, even for the corporation, because at some point we will lose the social license to operate. Most international companies have supply chains, and whether you're talking about t-shirts or microchips or tomatoes, uh, there's producers that make the product, and it feeds into the supply chain. Some of these companies are taking steps to say to the subcontractors in the supply chain, this is how much we water we want used per unit, per potato, per tomato. That is a very positive step because that is doing something which most governments have grave difficulty in doing. It's been a journey over three years of helping CEOs and government ministers and the heads of global financial institutions to understand the importance of water in underpinning economic growth in particular. But the problem is big, right? And the problem is particularly big if we don't start to think about ways of addressing it now. The business of water management is technical, yes, but is also deeply institutional, political, and indeed emotional and religious. And the great challenge of water is how do you bring these various perspectives together into something which can actually work for people.